extremely well, and we played great defense again tonight. So uh, just love seeing the guys uh, play a complete ball game. Monty was in here before the Clemson series saying you, he really didn't know how much power you guys would be able to hit for going into this year. So far, so good. Did you anticipate this kind of power surge through the first four weeks? I don't think anybody did, right, John? I don't think anybody did. Um, but, you know, we knew it, the guys were strong enough. We knew that, you know, we could see it at times. But early in the spring, you know, before the season started, it, we had some cold weather. A lot of our scrimmages were in sh tough shadows, and you're facing our pitching staff. It was hard to really get a, a gauge on what we thought our offense would be. Um, I didn't. I thought we would be good, but I didn't think we would be like this so far. So again, got to keep it going. It's a long season, but very pleased with how these guys swing the bat. You've also talked a lot about trying to grind at bats out one through nine, the whole liner thing. How much of a luxury is that when you've got your eight and nine guys with nine RBIs tonight? It's a tremendous luxury. Um, you know, Dylan Brewer's given us a huge lift down there at the bottom, and uh, really, really happy for him, happy with him. Uh, and to have McGillis and Brewer down there doing what they're doing, that just makes our lineup that much longer and, and uh, very dangerous. With a guy like Dylan, was it just something of him capitalizing on an opportunity in a starting lineup, or did he tweak something that's allowed him to have a little bit more success? At the you know, I think I was very impressed with how he handled the Clemson series. Uh, he took really good at bats. He was poised, and I think he's made a commitment to stop trying to be a dead pull hitter and stay more to the middle of the field. And when he does that, he, he gives you really good at bats. And so I think it's a combination of those things, Colin. What you see from Will tonight, last start before SEC play, especially the way he battled through that third inning? Yeah, I thought he, I thought he was pretty good. Um, again, you want to see him dominate. You have such high standards for Will Sanders that it's hard. Uh, probably, it's, it's, I think it's hard for him to ever live up to our standards for him because he's just we think so much of him. But again, three earned runs in six innings, eight strikeouts, one walk. It's very workmanlike, I would call it. Um, but I still think there's there's another another level for him to get to. A couple of guys I wanted to ask about uh, Cole. Cole, what what? How has he stepped up his game this year? Did you expect seeing so much power from him? Uh, Cole has made as much improvement from freshman to sophomore year as any player I've had in a long time. And it's offensively and defensively. Let's not, let's not miss the fact that he's become a very, very good defensive catcher and framer and blocker and thrower. Um, I'm as happy about his defensive improvement as his offensive improvement. And his offensive improvement has been tremendous um, so again you, when you recruit these guys you hope they turn into certain things and and he's he's trending in the direction that we really hoped he could be when we signed him and certainly not trying to be a downer after a 20 20 run night but you, you're still trying to find I would think a, a guy at that leadoff spot to to be as productive as, as you want to there what What's kind of going through your mind as far as to how to how to get that spot going? Yeah, I like I like the look of Caleb there. We just got to get him hitting again. You know, he's just he's in a little bit of a funk right now, um, but I think he probably may end up being the right guy there because he's he's speedy, he's athletic. You know, a left-handed leadoff hitter is is ideal. Um, so I think I think he's probably the guy. All things considered, we just got to get him going. You know, it, it's going to happen. It's impossible to have all nine guys at the top of their game at the same time. Um, the season started and Cassis got off to a little slow start when Denny was crushing it. And so now they've, they've kind of flipped you know, a little bit. But uh, once he gets it going, you know, I, I think he's the right guy there. This is a Bethune-Cookman staff from a starter perspective that had some pretty good numbers. What were you able to do against their starter tonight that kind of chased him in the fourth? I round? mean, we just took quality bats. Again, it, it sounds simple, but we took the pitches that we should take and we swung at the pitches that you should swing at. When he when he made mistakes, you know, we put good swings on him and and we worked him hard and, and uh, you know, and, and we took more walks than they usually give up, which I think is, is a testament to the bats we were, we were getting. Now they've got two really good starters with really good stats going tomorrow. So we take nothing for granted. So we're going to have to come out tomorrow and do the same thing. Uh, it feels like a long time ago now, but the relay when you were down 2-1, how big of a play was that and what did you see? Yeah, great question by you because I thought that was – it's hard to say a turning point, but I think it was a turning point. You know, Will was, was teetering a little bit right there, and so for our defense to pick him up like they did, they executed that perfectly. Um, we, we have a thing we do uh, on a semi-regular basis called Eye in the Sky where we'll show our guys, you know, proper – 
proper use of cuts and relays and, and running the bases and, and a lot of things. And that was just a textbook example of how you do a cut and relay to get an out at the plate. And I thought that kind of sparked us and kind of got us going. Uh, great question because uh, it's, it, that can be forgotten in a game like that. And I thought that was a key moment. I really did. All right. Thank you.